Hello, my name is Leila Josephine and you're listening to my own private audio. I'd like to introduce my piece, Elizabeth and Her House. When you are listening to this cautionary tale, try cleaning or tidying up something. I bet there's dishes to do, surfaces to dust, floors to mop. It's hard to stay on top of it all, isn't it? Maybe this piece will help you see your own home in a different way, a new light. Or maybe it will work as a warning, stopping you before you end up like Elizabeth. Elizabeth and her house. Our story starts with Elizabeth downloading an app for mindfulness. She wanted to learn to be present but no one guessed what she was getting herself into when she opened the first lesson. Chanting monks and hypnotic bells tuned her to the moon. She claimed she reached enlightenment while staring at a reflection in a teaspoon. She realised she had wasted so much time worrying her little head. She made a promise there and then to be grateful for every small thing from now until she was dead. She'd never properly looked around to witness the magic in every day. She'd been distracted by this and that and made a pact to live now in a different way. She rediscovered herself. Bit by bit, as if she was an island, she came to the conclusion she'd wasted far too much time searching for others on the horizon. She would strip tease at her wardrobe as if it was an old man with a fist full of fivers. She sang and pleasured herself, cursing her past lovers. Elizabeth started spending all of her time alone. She felt she was flourishing now she was riding solo. She patched her friends and snubbed the neighbours and ignored her mum. They didn't understand or accept the new person she'd become. It became a love affair, this new intimacy with herself in the empty house. She quit her job and completely stopped going out. She threw away her phone and closed her blinds. She sold her car and didn't go online. She got her shopping delivered until her card eventually declined. Her place was a mess, but she was the goddess of it. No longer did she have use for clean things. No longer did things need washed. Personal hygiene was a waste of time and was indefinitely paused. The app had taught her how to love everything just the way it was. She drank tea from Prosecco flutes and porridge from a pot. She put mayo in an ashtray and ate soup with a fork. She played chess with the spiders and badminton with the moths. She took to wandering naked or dressed only in a tablecloth. After a few months, things were really out of control. She couldn't remember who she was, her past life or her family. It all just felt so long ago. Post piled at her front door and she didn't know what to make of it. No matter how long she would stare or squint, she couldn't make sense of the letters combined, a name and address she no longer recognised. And Elizabeth only missed one thing from the outside and that was sex. In this new way of living, Elizabeth was left with no choice but to objectify her objects. She enjoyed her environment a little too much. She would get a fanny flutter every item she used or touched. She would flirt unashamed with her side cabinet, massaging herself along the woolen carpet. She would rub lamps in between her thighs, riding her chaise long like it needed the exercise. She would lick her plate for longer than she should, brushing her breasts along the floor's hard wood. She sucked on every spine, on every book, lingering on her belongings never felt so good. Her screams were heard two doors down at number six, but they had their own reasons to keep their heads down and out of it. With no one around, she indulged in her fantasies. She fingered statues on her mantelpiece. She French kissed every shoe. She made love to the electrics and light bulbs blew. She had a threesome with the sink and tub, smearing herself on the fridge, giving the skirting board a good hard rub. With her toothbrush she played truth or dare, she gave head to the dining room table and chairs. Eventually she had fucked every piece of cutlery from her drawer and then moved onto the hoover until she was sore. She swallowed and spat the filling from her couch. By the end she had tasted and banged every surface in her house. Her buds blooming with every varnish and thread, she didn't realise she was withering away and heading for death. She did to objects what lovers had taken for her and in the end it got nasty. She could never get enough. 
She never felt full, she became empty and numb. She wanted to feel something again, so she turned the shower on extra hot. She would ask worse things of her possessions to throw her about a bit and act rough. The mirror started looking at her funny and the stairs kept laughing behind her back. She was getting a weird vibe from her Ikea shoe rack. Grinding with the cheese grater, she cut herself loose. The bed wouldn't let her out even though she'd slept the whole night through. She couldn't remember what she'd been trying to prove. In bed, she started to stiffen, unable to move. It was as if she was the wet concrete, seeping into the house's cracks. She became more hard and solid with every day that passed. It was as if she herself was the paint on the ceiling, the glass in the windows. She was as thin as a draft, sweeping along the floor. As time moved slower, she knew that she was done for. She became the slates and cement, the mortar and brick, made of thoughtlessness. She was the walls and the walls were her fortress. On her last day, she smelt her sheets and count her blessings. She was unsure with what to do with her last seconds. She gazed from her bed to the street, somewhere that she used to exist. A car went by and lit up her pale gaunt face. And then she just slipped off into some inanimate place.